Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another edition of Wake and Pack on a Friday morning. TGIF. You know, um, everybody already know on this street, 420 HPLV Boulevard, it is Friday every day. And I suggest you guys live your life the same way. Okay. Um, the quote that I got posted up there, I made it known. The heartbeat, a raider through and through. Okay. So uh, that is what uh, now head coach of the Raiders was interim head coach. Now head coach of the Raiders. That is what he said on the exit of Josh Jacobs. Now us as Packer fans, we know something similar. And these players, again, as much as they're different, they are so much alike. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we're going to get into that. But what I don't like, you know, obviously this is the media sucks 4.0. Check out 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 somewhere within my waking packs. But this is just, you know, the chance that I get as a Packers fan to speak up for a certain kind of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That they just put out there. Obviously, not a game on Sunday. You know, training camp ain't even start. We ain't even had the draft yet. Rosters aren't even constructed yet, but they got the nerve to say some of the things that they say. So you guys see, they gave the Packers, this just Josh Jacobs. I, this ain't uh the whole free uh agency deal, which was still great, but they gave us a C minus for the Josh Jacobs pickup. And I just really don't understand where they're coming from for it. I really don't understand. So uh, we're going to get to understand together. Hell yeah, man. Shit, we just chilling. We calling out these media folks, man. And these were some mainstream media people. Now what I did, like, you know, I seen the thumbnail and was flabbergasted. So what I did, I scrolled and looked at a few of the comments. Shout out to my boy Zane Strong. Good morning to Brandy Lewis. Oh, yeah, they definitely suck. Shout out to the homie Gooseby Gooseby. All right, so this is my issue, bro. What, what reference are you getting this from? You know what I'm saying? Um, the down years that Josh Jacobs did have, number one, one of the years, which he only had two down years, and that's down years considered to what he all already brought to the table. So first of all, in human joy, what's the word, bro? Good morning to everybody. So first of all, he is the third leading rusher in Raiders history with the short time that he's been there. 5,545 yards. Third behind Marcus Allen and Mark Van Egan, whoever that is. I don't know who the hell Mark Van Egan is. Clearly he was a baller, but Marcus Allen, I do know and all you guys know. And actually, shout out to Marcus Allen, came to my college and talked to us. You know what I'm saying? You know, we get to, we got to wear a Super Bowl ring and shit like that. Moments like that, you'll never forget. That was at Santa Monica College. RIP to Coach Taylor. Anybody know about Coach Taylor? Do your research. Santa Monica College, Coach Taylor. I was honored to play for him. Rest in peace. He coached Chad Johnson at the same school. He coached Steve Smith at the same school. You feel me? So, you know, uh, it was an honor for me to play for him. But uh, back to what we talking about. Um, he is the third leading his rusher in Raiders history. Raiders been around a long time, y'all. So I'm just really trying to find what crack, what crab is like, what did they really find in this Josh Jacobs dude to say that we got a C minus? First of all, let's look at the situation. We lose Aaron Jones. And at the time, we didn't think that we'll have AJ Dillon. Shout out to Patrice Goldberg. You already know, you already know they hating on us. Hey, Patrice, WrestleMania coming soon, okay? You rolling with Cody or you rolling with The Rock? Hey, you seen what Rocky did to him? Hey, Rocky should have threw his ass over the ledge, though. He should have threw him over. You remember when he threw Stone Cold over there? And he threw his belt into the water, but we ain't going to get into that. Back to Josh Jacobs, okay? So uh, I'm just trying to figure out where do they see this is a bad deal. Look at the situation. Now, yes, and let me tell you how they're similar. Aaron Jones is also the third leading is rusher for the Packers behind Amon Green and Jim Taylor. So both of these dudes are in the same spot within their respective franchises. If you look at their numbers, really, really, really similar. Josh Jacobs and Aaron Jones, they run 
total different ways, but their numbers are very similar. I'll give Aaron Jones the edge in receiving the ball, right? Maybe Josh Jacobs seen that. Maybe soon as Josh Jacobs, maybe soon as we picked him up, he looked at Aaron Jones stats and said, you know what? What's the first thing you y'all heard Josh Jacobs said to Matt LaFleur? I want to catch the ball more. And that goes into Matt LaFleur. So how are you saying this is a C minus? That's not a passing grade to me. A C is average. That's below average. Y'all put the minus on there, which was like, come on, y'all. So, bro, I agree. Ooh, Patrice, hey, you going to do that? What about Cody? Cody can't finish his story? Yeah, hey, you know, he probably still going to be able to finish it, but what I think about WrestleMania, I think Rock is just, his star is shining, bro. He making Roman look bad. Rocky coming up in all these Versace shoots and shoots, Versace suits and shit. Roman wearing a fucking track suit. Like, bro, who really looks like the tribal king or tribal chief, whatever they want to call it. But uh, back to uh, Josh Jacobs, y'all. Um, It's not just about him. It's about the team slash situation he's just leaving. Clearly, his head coach got fired last year, y'all. So that would hinder any time a head coach gets fired and that head coach, Josh McDaniels, was offense oriented. And while he was the coach before he got fired, the offense players and everybody stepped out, had an issue with him. So you got to think about where he's coming from, that kind of environment to where he's going to come to in Green Bay. He already can tell the difference. I'm just letting you know. I can see it in his eyes. I can see it in his eyes, McKinney's eyes. This is something different over here. This is a winning franchise. So again, back to these people saying that this is a C minus. How is it a C minus? What do you do in free agency? The job in free agency is to fill holes wherever you need them. There was the biggest hole ever at running back since Aaron Jones was leaving. And what were we saying? Week in, week in and week out. What were we saying? Just like Antonio Pierce called Josh Jacobs the heartbeat of the team. Who the fuck y'all think was the heartbeat of our team? It was Aaron Jones. So for us to lose a similar player like Aaron Jones, the heartbeat of our team, and to get somebody as comparable, just as good, did more with less time, more productive and more durable and younger. So how in the fuck is this a C minus? I don't get it. Not only did we replace what we lost, which was the biggest hole in our offense, all year we've been saying, what is our offense? Aaron Jones is our offense. No matter how much love is throwing, he has no favorite receiver. He's throwing to everybody. Aaron Jones was our offense, bro. So I'm asking you guys, okay, so how is this a C minus if we lose our whole offense, which is Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, didn't know he was coming back. We get a guy like this to fill his place. That's a fucking A++, like my boy Zane said. Yeah, you know, he went there. He went there. He, he, he went to start talking about Mama Rhodes, man. Shit. I'd have said something about Brandy if I was The Rock. I would have said Brandy looked like she tastes like Honey Nut Cheerios. I, I'm shocked that Rock didn't say nothing about Brandy. But we know Rock don't like black girls. So, you know, he might not say nothing about her. Listen, he's durable, and Aaron Jones has two years on him, and he still ran the ball more and played more games. Aaron Jones played in, uh, I forgot the number, uh, 85 out of 97 in his career. Josh Jacobs played 72 out of 73, missed one. So, you know, durability is not an issue. And then what I really don't like is what they say. We got him because we came from a dude that wasn't durable. So they're going to flip the narrative and say, be careful. You're taking a risk with Jacobs. He has a lot of carries. That's the fucking reason we got him because he can take it. He's shown that he can take it. You know what I'm saying? And coming from a situation where you're dealing with an interim coach who's on the other side of the ball, not even on offense. How do you expect him to have a, a good year? And let's talk about the person. The head coach already said he was the heartbeat. He'd been the captain. College, Alabama, like top notch. Just last month, he went on a, a, a camp, right? 
a lot of these football players get their money. You know, they're going to do their training in the offseason or whatever, but they could just twiddle their fingers, go to vacation, do what they need to do. He's at football camps with a lot of little kids, man. That shows he loves the game. That shows he cares about the community. And that just shows the, the, the kind of person we're getting. Yes, we lost Walter Payton, man of the year, Aaron Jones, all the shit he did for Green Bay, all that. Yes, but to replace it with something that's comparable, that's why I just don't understand the C-minus with that. So, uh, you know, that's all I got on that. You know what I'm saying? We could dig deeper. We could go and talk about it. But I really don't see the logic saying a C minus for that. We literally filled the biggest hole that was our, you know, that was on offense and free agency. So how the fuck is that a C minus? They just hate me. Raiders reporter. I wasn't even going to say their names. Uh, no, it wasn't. I'm sorry, Zane. It was from ESPN. The top of the top. And what made me feel better, like I said, I scrolled down and looked at the comments of that C minus they gave. And one commenter said, oh, well, this is the same grade they gave the Niners for getting Christian McCaffrey last year. Now I'm like, oh, well, how did that work out? Offensive player of the year. So even them dumb motherfuckers at ESPN ain't learned shit yet. And y'all supposed to be the top of the top. You just obviously don't know football. And this man ain't took a snap. And don't you think he'll be in a better position offensively with MLF calling plays? With Adam Stinovich putting shit together? He's already in a better situation, so he's going to be better. Like, they tripping. I don't like that. You already know, bro. But what? But that it's disrespectful, though, okay? Give us a seat. Just give us a pass. You're going to put the minus on there? You may as well give us a D. You gonna, you know what I'm saying? I'm cool. Goosey, Goosey, I don't know. I might have to disagree because safety was another big glaring problem. And Goosey, Goosey, you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to explain that to me about that McKinney. You ain't big on McKinney, my bro? Oh, man. Yeah, bro. Can you send that cruise egg to me, man? Shout out to Higher Point of View Gaming, my gaming channel. My boy Zane is fully invested in the Madden Ultimate team. Man, shit, I'm going to jump on that bitch early today. I might jump on that bitch after uh, this thing because, you know, I got to do stuff later. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it later. So I might have to just jump on it now. Shout out to my boy Ernie Martinez, man. Yeah, bro, they be hating, man. They be hating, bro. Uh, I have, you know, I have so many videos I have to delete them. Years and years and years ago, I remember our Super Bowl run. I just start recording everything. I'm like, these motherfuckers, I'm not going to let them get the fuck away from what they be saying. You know, I record all the time. Oh, they're making their picks throughout the whole C Super Bowl run that we had. Nobody picked us, even against Chicago in the NFC Championship. It was only like one or two people to pick the Packers. So it is what it is. Oh, yeah, shit. Not just Sports Network, Brandy. I could talk about a whole lot of other shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we're going to get together. I swear if I if I didn't have to work and do what I did and take care of the kitties and do what all the shit I had to do, I'd be a full-time YouTuber. I have like seven channels. Gaming, wrestling, football, entertainment. I'll talk about all that shit. Very knowledgeable, too. Absolutely. Shout out to my boy, Joe. That's all I'm saying, man. And believe me, somehow, some way, you know, if there ever is a higher point of view sports network, I'm going to have Brandy producing. I'm going to have Taylor Bell as my little scout doing research. I'm going to have TR, you know, in the media department. Like, we're going we gonna to do it big. Um, I wouldn't even say lately, Brandy. Uh, it seems like, you know, running back's been devalued for a good while now. You know what I'm saying? And I really just think it sucks, right? Uh, because they take most of the pain and their careers are the shortest. You know, running back, not only when you get the ball every time all 11 people are trying to come get you, right? You're getting the ball out of the backfield, okay? And two, even when you're not getting the ball, you got to go pass pro and some big ass 6'2", 250 pound linebackers coming to, to try to wipe you out. And you're undersized as a running back. So, you know, I think it's pretty unfair. I remember the 90s running back used to be really prominent. Like, you needed one. Nowadays, is you need two, right? With the, with the emergence of passing games, some running backs weren't used to catching the ball as much. So you'll have that one, you know, smash, and then you'll have the one who could catch and do whatever. Now, 
You got hybrids. Aaron Jones is a hybrid. Josh Jacobs is a hybrid. Yeah, man, we're gonna have to make them uh eat that crow, bro. Like we like we just gonna have to make them eat it, bro. Like, you feel me? Like I'm tired of people just saying shit. Even, you know, y'all know, hey, when own when my when our own fans say some asinine bullshit, you know I'll be the first one to call him out. You know? Jordan Love ain't my quarterback. I, I think he is. I think he's on a roster, you know what I'm saying? And he ain't going nowhere. And that was it. Now he's definitely our quarterback. And definitely gonna take us to the promised land. And I will forever have Jay Love's back. Unless he leave and put that purple shit on or you know, whatever else, you know. But as for right now, what I always say, you got the G on your helmet, I got your back. I don't give a fuck. Why would we wish bad? Talk bad, talk down. Why so fuck Sean Clifford, right? Fuck Sean Clifford. He ain't my quarterback. Sean Clifford's horrible. I I'm just playing, but Sean Clifford's actually kind of bright. Which is why I still don't know the dumbass rumors of, oh, you know, Goot, chill out, Goot. I know, you know, in Goot we trust, and when 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 we zig, they zag, all that. But Goot, it ain't time to draft no quarterback under any circumstance. Sean Clifford is decent, bro. Sean Clifford is decent. Hell yeah. Hey. And he's a stand-up guy, bro. Josh Jacobs comes in, all pro. And then, okay, back to Josh Jacobs. 2022, we're not talking about 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago, two years ago, 2022, led the league in rushing, not only rushing, but in yards from scrimmage. Two years ago, I mean, he can't be beat up that much. Like, I just don't get that logic, bro. And you got Sean Clifford's rookie car? Well, shit, it may be worth something one day. I'm looking at him. He might be like a Matt Flynn kind of dude. Oh yeah, I ain't, I, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't doubting you and your Madden skills, Zane. You know I ain't gonna do that, bro. I ain't gonna doubt your Madden skills at all. But hey, you didn't finish that game. You threw J Love in there quick when you tried to start Clifford against me. But yeah, man, you know. Hey, from your mouth to the football god's ears. Shout out to Goat Mike, man, and Goat Pack, motherfucking Goat. So, yeah, what do y'all think? Am I tripping? Is that a C minus to you guys? I believe so. And I think, again, it might be a Matt Flynn type deal. You feel me? You know, we may be in such, you know, this is a dream, y'all. So let's just say, you know, we do so good that we could bench our players the last couple games of the season. You know, again, we might, hey, not saying that's going to happen. We might be in a tidy you know, a tight one, and it goes all the way to the end till we make the playoffs. I'm cool with that, too. But at some point, with this regime we have, we're going to be blowing motherfuckers out. If all these motherfuckers get it together. So just say, for instance, just the last game, we ain't got to start nobody. Sean Clifford goes in there and lights it up. You never know. It might be a Matt Flynn situation where at least we could get some picks for him. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, dude ain't going to take over for J-Love, right? But, uh, you know, we need him to show out at some point, right? And the only time nowadays... There was a couple of times where Sean Clifford got in. Obviously, Dallas playoff game and a couple other games like that, which we will be having a lot more blowout games. So I really hope Clifford comes in, shows off in preseason, and then just does his damn thing, bro. You think, Brandy, I, that was the, like, again, I just really trying to understand where are they coming from? They talking about taking J Jacobs is a risk. No, it's not. Look at where he's coming from to where he's going. The offense is going to, man, come on. G did you know who his coach was last year? Josh McDaniels. Did you know? Which was a mistake by McDaniels. Midway through the season, he said, you know what, whole team, we're going to do a meeting. I want you guys to file your grievances with me. Let me know how you feel about me. Boy, I know he wish he never did that. The whole team went off on his ass. So when that kind of shit is happening and coaches is getting fired and you're already playing for a losing franchise, let's just be honest. The Raiders are a losing franchise. Haven't won shit in a long time. So shit is going to change when Jacobs comes to Green Bay. They are not considering that. And I can't wait to make them. But again, it ain't like they're going to be raising their hand like, oh, yeah, I said Jacobs was a C minus. No. OK. And then again, not even to defend anything from San Francisco, but the same grade was given when they got Christian McCaffrey. How the fuck did that work out?
San Francisco is a different situation from Carolina. Just changing the situation is going to help just Josh Jacobs. So what the hell is they talking about, man? I agree. And, you know, again, I just used to see the helmet, the number, and just him throw. But I actually seen a few interviews with the kid. The kid is bright, jovial, got swag, bro. Mary's well. Clifford it might be a gem, bro. He might be a gem. So that's why I don't understand. Good talking about, oh, yeah, fuck a, bro. Don't draft no quarterback. Hey, if anything, get a fucking vet who's on his way out for the bare minimum. Maybe he can, you know, teach J Love certain things he don't know. But uh, just to draft a quarterback, I, I don't think that's a good idea. And I hope Gooch just blowing blowing smoke up people's ass. Oh, you know he gonna feed off that. But bro, what really, 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 really got me? One of the first things talked about that he said when he came here is, "I want to catch the ball more." He must have looked at those Aaron Jones receiving numbers. And then again, back to Christian McCaffrey. You know, I'm going to give it to him. You know, if I were to say that Aaron Jones, which I've been saying the past few years, I'd say Aaron Jones is on the same level as Christian McCaffrey. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. You could look at the numbers, look at his best year opposed to Aaron Jones' best year. I remember they both was going head to head throughout the year. Aaron Jones had like 20 touchdowns and McCaffrey might have had 21-22. You know, like Aaron Jones is fully capable of doing what McCaffrey can do. So now, if I'm going to say that about Jones, I'm going to say the same thing about Jacobs, bro. We got a top-tier running back. Just look at the man's pedigree. What is there to say that he's declining? Bro, he's coming to a better situation. He's coming to a better offense, better offensive line, better play caller. Yeah, definitely. 3P. And then after the three peat, we going for the quadro. How about that? For real. We don't need that. He does seem like a joker. And then again, to call good out. Okay. But again, y'all media, them media motherfuckers ask stupid ass questions. They literally, even with Matt LaFleur, they literally want us to give out the whole game plan before games. Oh, so how do you plan to attack your next opponent? Even Matt LaFleur says, oh, yeah, let me just give you my whole game plan. So they asking good in the offseason, is this guy staying? Is this guy staying? Why don't you let the offseason happen and wait like everybody fucking else? You want this dude to just answer right there? So he was forced into saying he did say it with his mouth, and I ain't even going to call him a liar for this. Oh, is Aaron Jones staying? He told him, yeah, because that was all the plans, obviously, 12th hour, negotiations, tactics. The shit didn't happen. And some people might say, Goot's a liar. He said Aaron was going to stay. Well, shit changes. And y'all media motherfuckers need to start asking different and better questions. I, I wish I was in the media. I'll be asking the most left field questions and they'll probably enjoy all of my questions. These motherfuckers ask the same things. What you think they ask fucking every Monday morning in the Matt LaFleur? Oh, Christian Watson got injured. How long is it going to take? Bitch, he got injured yesterday. He in the hospital now. We don't know how long it's going to take. Why the fuck y'all asking that? You know, that's why I understand why Matt LaFleur gets mad and don't want to answer injury questions. Wait for the injury report, damn it. Why the fuck you going to ask coach about that? And we want to hold off from letting the opponents know if a motherfucker playing or not. Sometimes Green Bay media kills me. They be asking questions. I'm just like, do you want us to give away the whole game plan? Same thing with Halfley. It's like, okay, don't ask them too many questions. Don't give any defense, uh, offensive coordinator uh, any kind of thought of how to stop this guy. Just shut the fuck up and watch what he does. Oh, is this going to be your pro safety? Oh, who's going to be this guy? Oh, what are you going to do here? Let him do it, bro. Let, let him figure it out. Absolutely. Because, again, it's just, a you know, the thing is what people say. It's too brutal of a position. That's why they don't want to put big money behind it because, you know, blown ACLs, blown this, blown that. I understand that, but with contracts nowadays, there's certain ways you could do shit. Proving contracts, other shit like that. The running back is not dead. The running back is a necessity, bro. You can't just have anybody running back there. You can't. Now, I mean, you know, that would be the only case. Uh, No, not at this point. Not at this point. You know, if he's if he showed any slippage throughout the rare times that we seen him, yes, I would be like, all right, you know what? But all we seen in the preseason was decent Clifford. Whenever he did come in in a game, which was very rare, it was decent Clifford. 
Now, if we've seen some shit where it's like, holy shit, who's our backup? He needs work. Okay, then bring somebody in. But right here, right now, no. This is a fucking youth movement. And even Clifford said, like, come on, man, give me a, a better rating. I could throw a slant route. Hello, that's another thing. Like, it's not about just the player. It's about the situation he's coming from, bro. You know? Hey, look at Travis Kelsey. He with Taylor Swift now. Hey, I'm sure he ain't think about the old bitch, right? There's levels to this. You know, at least as far as money, you know, I'll take his old bitch for the looks, but she it. Ask me right now. I'm married Taylor Swift too. Right now, today. And get her pregnant. Quick. Fast. Yes, he's geeked about him, and Jacobs is geeked about LaFleur. Y'all heard what Jacobs said. He's like, damn, I didn't think Matt LaFleur would be that cool. So for y'all, you know, older folks, probably, you know, Jacobs just saying that, you know, LaFleur is a cool white boy. You know, that's basically what he was saying. Some coaches are just, you know, just, you know, LaFleur, you could go and talk to him, bro. Oh, no Huntley, no Kaiser, none of that. Oh, I, I ain't even met her last time I ate a Kaiser roll. Yeah, bro. Shout out to Steve. But again, Antonio Pierce ain't have to say shit. He could have just said, oh, yeah, you know, I wish him the best in his future endeavors. You know, he said he was the heartbeat of a team. The heartbeat, bro, had to see on his chest. You cannot disvalue or undervalue that. Boy, oh, boy. Yeah, those are some rough years. And you know me. I had full support of him. I just thought and knew one game Huntley was going to come out on fire. Never happened. Yeah, and it's just, uh, bro, they just do, like, bro, do your own, like you said, do your own research, find out about the injuries. Every fucking Monday morning, you know what they're going to ask Matt LaFleur. Oh, whatever player got hurt in the game, they're going to ask about it. Fucking why? Look at the injury report when it comes out. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you get to see if the motherfucker practices, did not practice. That should let you know in your mind that the dude ain't healthy. Now, if he was a full participant, say he got hurt on Sunday. Y'all ask, oh, what happened? Well, if you wait to Tuesday to see if he participates in practice, Wednesday, light participant, Thursday, full participant, you could get your own answers. Why the fuck you asking Matt LaFleur dumbass questions, knocking him off his square? And why do y'all always want us to give out the whole game plan? Just like when Aaron Rodgers was about to go. Your boy got on there, you know, before anybody knew it was trouble, just because he had some angle. Uh, is everything cool, Rogers? Bro, let this shit play out. That's crazy. That's crazy. And then again, they said something about the, the uh, guaranteed money. Oh, you guys gave him 12 something guaranteed. Hello, Russ Ball. Signing bonus, get rid of that. Not on the books. Like, y'all gotta understand what the fuck is going on. That's another thing. That should be low as hell. Can't hear shit in their whole media department. Like, bro, let me take, you know, okay, I give credit to the uh, it's a cool kid, you know, be outside of Lambo with the glasses and all that. The players pull up, he talked to him. All right, that's cool. We need more of that shit. Let me do that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Let, let, we need more media presence. Like, we are too big of a franchise to not have all kind of crazy shit out there, bro. Like, we really need a little more help in the media department. Okay, hey, shout out and uh, shit. Shout out to Bub too. That's my uncle. I got two uncles named Bubba. Love them both. Both my favorite uncles from both sides of the family. They end up having the same name. Nothing to do with each other. Um. Okay, uh, so even the numbers, I wasn't even tripping off of yesterday, Milto. What I was basically saying was how confident him and his agent was was coming to Green Bay because they seen the shit Anders was doing. He may be right on par to, uh, you know, what Anders can do, but he's confident that he can outbeat him. So that's basically what I was talking about. He made a 61-yarder, longest in Minnesota history. Anders made one, albeit in the preseason, he made a 61-yarder. So I'm not saying he's any better than Anders. He is more experienced and he's a hella confident coming in. OK, so that's all I was saying about that. So, again, I'm, I'm with the Anders deal. I want him to work. OK, I like the story of a motherfucker. Everybody mad at him. He sucks and this and that. And then he comes back and redeem himself. Them same motherfuckers. 
Oh, yeah. No, nah, bro. Sit your bitch ass down, bro. That should be getting on my nerves, you know? But again, fan how you guys want to fan. But you do that shit around me, I'm going to call it out. It is what it is. That's another thing. Like, y'all just think AJ just about to sit back and just chill and be okay with the backup role. First of all, he has an advantage over Jacobs. He knows the offense. Jacobs is going to be asking him all the questions. So initially, to start the year off, this might be a half and half deal where Dylan gets it and he gets it, right? And then again, just because Josh Jacobs is so durable, you know, that's good for us, but we still ain't even going to run him to the ground like that. We got AJ there. Emmanuel Wilson will emerge. Emmanuel Wilson will get carries too. Don't know him. Hey, y'all, please, uh, you know, I ain't on my draft shit. So whenever y'all mention a name that I should look at, uh, college is cool, but go ahead and throw in his position, too, so I can know what we're talking about. Joe Milton from Tennessee. W w what position is he, my boy, Joe? Okay, okay, there it is. I ain't ready for that yet, though, Joe. I ain't going to go that far for AJ. Go, Mike. I ain't going to go that far. You know what I'm saying? It's only one ball, and you know Jay love is going to want to throw it around a little bit this year. You know, he's going to be more confident than ever. So, you know, I still think this may be a pass oriented offense. It will be pretty, I think 60, 40 ish, right? It ain't going to be too drastic, but you know, I think we're going to throw that thing around a little more, you know, we'll see. Oh yeah, for sure. Hey, shout out to Dave Chappelle too. The great Dave Chappelle. He said, fuck it. I'm going to Africa. Oh yeah. Let, let Oprah, Hey, let Oprah come past me. I'm going to send my shot. I'm going to shoot my shot. Hey, she going to say yes or no. Let Kim K, let her pass me up. She hey, she want to be walking around with Odell and shit like that. Hey, you know, I, I'm around his age. So, hey, come, come through. Well, no, I'm a little older than Odell. But still, you know, I'll take care of you. You know, just get pregnant real quick. Yeah, if I was Travis Kelsey, I'd binge. Boy, she'd be pregnant already. Now that is more likely like okay you want to give clifford a little push all right do something like that but to use a draft pick and i know we got a ton of them but no bro this is the youth movement we need three linemen two safeties two linebackers whatever else we need bro d we need an edge rusher still too i don't know i don't know but uh you feel me It's going to be something for him, his first year to compete with your boy Dak like that. Dak been in his offense for years. Got it figured out. CeeDee Lamb top, you know, receiver stacked over there. O-line good. Like he had all what he wanted. And look what he did. Jay Love right behind him. Shout out to the homie, man. Packers fan in Vegas in the building. All right. I see you. Thanks for the support. You're right. You're right. And um, again, y'all, look, can I just take a hit? Y'all, uh, <laughs> yeah, bro, uh, quiet is kept. Our past two playoff losses to the Niners had to do with special teams one way or another. So we got to get this shit right. And then again, what all do, what do we ask our coaches and staff and, and, and the higher ups? Just be proactive. Whatever issue you see, damn, special teams horrible, fire Drayden, get him in. Get get Basashi in. Oh, we need a returner. All right, Basashi, bring your boy in from, from, from Oakland with you. We're going to bring him in and we're going to bring Levin in. Like, bro, everything, oh, Joe Barry stinking up the joint, fire him, bring somebody else in. He, hey, all you can ask is our guys to be proactive. Now, whether it works or not, that's still in his fault. So after this, you can't say, damn, LaFleur made a bad decision hiring Halfley. Well, he did. If we all agreeing right now that Halfley is a total opposite of Joe Barry, Patton, and Capers, that's trying, y'all. He could have just brought in another one of their disciples. He's going a whole nother way, bro. So just give, give our organization a little credit, people. Oh, yeah. He, he don't fuck around. He don't fuck around now. 
he's very brash with the media now and i'm so happy it took him a while to get in to get used to it but yeah uh i would agree to you i i, I agree to that vegas and you know again i'm an optimistic nigga bro Shit, he could crack 700 for us he could crack 700 for us man come on aj you could crack 700 well probably hey, he probably won't crack 700 because again wilson yeah bro hey and then again josh jacobs said i was just watching an interview he was like you know i like just the unknown i like you know he said after games a lot of players come and talk to me they like i don't know what you was gonna do because what he say he said one play i might try to juke you the next play i might try to run you over aaron jones ain't trying to run nobody over unless he has to we seen him get big and, and strong for a couple times at the goal line but it still was more finesse but josh jacobs will run your ass over oh well shit. you might just have to come here more often packer fan in vegas uh we all know how go mike is you know he just like you know we let go mike do his thing in this motherfucker yeah vegas is in the building y'all Shit, it might start raining in this bitch okay 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 for sure for sure for sure for sure i'm gonna do my little due diligence but anybody named bubba good with me i told you my two favorite uncles both sides of the fam named bubba love them both shout out to my nigga freddie roper in the building so okay i'm gonna have to we gonna have to i'm gonna have to check this dude out two two people in the chat done said you hear me you know talked about this dude and y'all and exchanging pleasantries we love that and um yeah no now what i will say goat mike is uh you know a thousand no okay a thousand no no i'm not gonna go there you know 650 you know we'll see we'll see but again uh i think he's making the team for sure i mean he was already gone right you know that 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 contract they gave him is something he didn't have to do but they didn't have to do but the way that contract is set up like bro he gonna make the team for sure hey i bet my bottom dollar on that aj dylan i make the team he made the team fucking three years in a row why i mean what decline would he have and knowing the playbook and being uh the segue to josh jacobs to help him learn the offense ah, bro gonna make the team we gotta uh uh, we gotta put it we gotta we gotta let anders we gotta just see what anders is gonna do we gotta just go out there and throw him out there and see what happens this year now he fucks up this year even early you know what i'm saying cost us games early for some fuck shit okay i'll get rid of them but again they being proactive at least they're bringing people in you know Yeah, I mean, the, the plan is, and the whole plan of Matt LaFleur's offense, everything looks the same, but then it, it becomes different, you know? And his play set up for other plays later. Like, it's just, it's the whole deal with his offense. Oh, yeah, bro, we definitely keeping him. And, bro, A.J. Dillon, week one, bro, he's going to get some carries, and he's going to be good, bro. He's going to be good. He went from a time of, you know, again, like I, I, re, I re related it to like when you break up with your bitch or something like that. Like there's been times I'm like, damn, this is the time she leaving. I ain't going to ever get her back. You know, and you keep calling. She answered the phone, you know, and then you talk. Then she come over. Then we get to back. You know what I'm saying? Then you're like, oh, boy, I ain't going to fuck that up again. You know, you get to that point where, you know, shit, at this point, I'm a fucking sneeze or a fart wrong. I'm out of here. So I got it. I got I to gotta be on my P's and Q's. Where will we fit him in at, though, bro? I, I I think we said at running back, bro. I think we are set at running back. If Tyler Goodson couldn't get us, couldn't snip the lineup, because again, you have to do more, especially when you at that third running back position, even second. Like, bro, not only you gotta be a running back, but y'all ass gonna be on special teams of some sort. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's more to do. 
Uh, we still will. You know, that's just the nature of the beast. And then again, there is always another play design and another philosophy. Again, football is kind of like boxing. Just because, you know, this dude knocked him out doesn't mean he could knock him out. Just because he knocked him out and you knocked him out don't mean that he can't knock him out. You know, scheme, styles make fights. That's just that one kind of deal. Uh, definitely. And then let's admit, too, you know, LaFleur did some learning and getting over the hump. He did some learning in Vegas, you know. LaFleur just ain't had it easy. And these are the lumps that I feel that coaches and players need to have. That interception, I'm again, not the popular opinion. I'm fucking glad he threw it. We cannot rewind, you guys. We lost to the Niners, okay? So in hindsight, I am glad he threw that pick. Why? It's been mentioned in every interview he's done. Matt LaFleur talked about it already. He said it makes him sick when he looks at the play, Jordan Love. So the motherfucker's going to learn from it. So you got to be happy. Hey, all these playoff losses we had, whether it was the defense's fault or whatever, you know, Tampa Bay, whatever, those are cuts that Matt LaFleur is getting. Remember, Andy Reid couldn't win a big one. Remember, Andy Reid got ran out of Philadelphia. Now look how Philly looking, you know. And to have Philly ahead of us still, I ain't feeling that. And to have the Texans ahead of us, I ain't feeling that. That should have been in my other The Media Sucks deal. That might be next time. They got Texans over us. It is what it is. It's early, though. It's early. You don't put no Texans over us, though. <laughs> hey, go, go. You a fool. <laughs> I mean, yes, it does. It does. It does. You got a point, but I don't think that's going to turn into a thousand, my bro. Okay, I'm going to check it out, Fred. Hey, but another thing, Fred, you know, I, I hate saying it. Hey, put me in some shorts and, and just go out there with no pressure and nothing, just go out there and throw. Cool, nigga, I'm talking about how he looked when he just called a play after getting his bell rang in a sack. Like how he called a play and how does he react on, hey, you just, it was second and eight. Now it's third and 15 after you just got your bell rang. Now, now do this, now do this drill. Now do this play. Now I know you can't simulate. You can't just beat these motherfuckers up and then make them do the drills. But what I'm saying is, as what one of my coaches said that I never forgot, everybody looks good in shorts. But, uh, you know, what I have to look at his, at his film, bro, at his real deal game film. I like when the play is called. I like when there's some adversity. How you acting when the other team just went and scored? How you acting when you turn the ball over? That's what I like to see. Fuck all this RAS. Cognitive tests, wonderlick tests, all this bullshit. It is good to know backgrounds, right? You know what I'm saying? But it's not the end all be all. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, my my, my fingertip is a half an inch shorter than this linebacker. You're gonna pick him because this he, he got his pinky is, is longer, bro. Come on. So am I, bro. Led the league. Not to lead the league. He led our team in motherfucking interceptions. Somebody had to do it, and he only had two. And he led our team, so that shows. What a shame. What what kind of job was being done, you know, by Joe Barry? And again, look at what Joe Barry was dealing with, too. You know, Valentine, journeyman, barely getting cut from squads come through. Valentine, what, six, seventh round pick, something like that. You know, we didn't expect them to come in and do shit. And they really came in and started a shitload of games and helped us win a shitload of games. And that's some really good experience that I think Valentine has. And that's just another thing, too. Motherfuckers just sitting back like Valentine ain't going to get better. That dude's a little little pit bull, bro. He's a little pit bull. He's going to get a penalty. He's going to get unsportsmanlike conduct. But I like it. I'd rather go down that kind of way. It will. It, it, it would definitely help him. It would definitely help him. They was going to go crazy anyway. Like, again, it's going to help. But again, they already did the research again. Every year is different and who knows what's going to happen. But it would only have happened two times with the Packers. That kind of tackle even happening. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Yes, he did. People don't want to say that, Joe. People don't want to mention nothing like that. And did a hell of a job doing it. Again, the two games that we won. Kansas City, Detroit, signature games of the year. Hello, Aaron Jones didn't even play. Who you think was taking the ball? Who you think was handling the, handling the load? Come on, y'all. Oh, for sure. I'm going to go. I'm going to go over. He ain't going to get five or nothing, but he should be able to snip two or three. 
He should he should be able to sniff two or three Vegas. What you got on that? Two or three. And remember, you know, depending on if we get a, a nickel in the draft, because again, or if we pick a nickel up from, you know, undrafted free agent or from being cut, you know, Nixon might be doing the punts and the kickoff returns, which would mean I'll give him four if that's the case. You know, I'll give him a solid four if he's returning punts too. Because number one, I don't want Jaden Reed returning punts because we need him on offense and he's just too dynamic of a player and helps our offense too much to even risk that. So I would like Keyshawn, since we're paying him, right? I would like him to return punts and kickoffs, but he can't return punts because he just got off the field for a fucking third down and he huffing and puffing, right? Because he was in coverage. So hope we draft a nickel that, uh, you know, ease up Keyshawn having to do stuff. But then again, y'all, hey, Darnell Savage gets signed by the Jags. A good deal, too. First thing Peterson say, oh, he, he playing. He playing a slot. Never played that with us. We started to, we we started putting them there, and I started to say, hey, that might be his spot. But then we got so bad injured at safety, he had to go back and play that, which he did well in that too. So shout out to Darnell Savage. You got your bag. We started you off. Go show him how the Packers do it, bro. See, them kind of niggas on the way out, I could say that kind of shit. But when you do like what Devondre did, when you do like what Aaron Jones did, I can't rock with that. I can't rock with that. Oh my God, Zane, you see me having fits about that shit. You see me having fits about that shit. Hey, TR, you ain't never late, bro. You fashionably late. Whenever you is late, it's fashionable. As soon as you walk in the door, the music stop. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, you need a ball handler, bro. You know, and they normally are on that team. Yeah, yeah, no. I think, you know, again, but see, the only thing why I'm thinking like, you know, he might get around the 500, you know, that Vegas said, or he Vegas said 500 would be like a, a, a blessing, is the emergence of Emmanuel Wilson. You know, I'd rather have an emergence of Emmanuel Wilson to have like, you know, a three running back deal, because let's be real, Jacobs might miss one or two. A.J. Dillon might miss one or two, you know, especially with the extra game. That's what Jacobs pretty much does his whole career. He, he done punched in a couple 17s, but he done missed one or two, right? Or, you know, or had to leave one early. Yeah, and again, you know, you just let them play to their strengths, man. You ain't going to see Rashawn in coverage. I guarantee you that. That motherfucker is just going to be rushing the ball. Same thing with LVN. He's just going to be rushing the ball. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have linebackers. McDuffie, it's, it's, it's going to be. Four two five for most of the time. You know what I'm saying? So this extra linebacker everybody want, that motherfucker only going to be in there for like, you know, what, 20% of the plays? If that, bro, everybody coming out there with all this freaky shit on offense, bro. Like, we got to compete. You got to stay in nickel down there. Like I said, nickel has become the new base, and, 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 and base has become the new sub. TR in the building. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, shit, we definitely don't want to play like no bitch, Brandy. Definitely not on no football field. So, uh, yeah, man, I mean, there still will be frustrating times. This And especially early on, y'all, again, this ain't Madden, bro. This ain't a, a, a card game. Yo, know, these are humans. They got to study the book. It's up to them, you know, if they want to. Hey, Josh Jacobs has the playbook already. You know, it's really up to him how often he wants to look at it in the iPad. Again, like I said, we students in class, you know, I ain't tripping. I, I just want to get a C. I'm not studying before the night of the test. I'm talking to a bitch on the phone or something. You might have that one Asian kid, that nigga studying, and he's studying in the morning. He going to get 10 out of 10. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool with my 7 out of 10. I probably could have got 10 out of 10, but I'd rather have been on the phone. So again, it's up to these people to learn and buy in the playbook and the philosophy, and it'd be a lot easier. But the thing about bringing Halfley in, one of his attributes is teaching his underboss, Coach O, D-line coach, ain't no joke, teaching. He's a good teacher. So these kids are going to get it fast. And we got so many. McDuffie's going to be important. Now, it ain't going to be the exact same defense that he played when he was with Halfley, of course. But be a variation, and he will know the terminology, and he'll be able 
to, you know, he'll be the middleman with all of this. Like, this shit going to work out. Same thing with McKinney. Came from Alabama. Same time as Josh Jacobs was there. It's all coming together. Hell yeah, happy Friday. Hey, I ain't, hey, I'm glad I ain't working right now, but you already know what I'm doing after this. Well, we don't want to hand it to us. And, uh, you know, how long have we been actually, you know, asking for, you know, a, a top five defense and never get it? So I'm not asking for that. And then again, even when we did win the Super Bowl, bro, that was opportunity defense opportunistic defense bro they motherfuckers still move the ball on us and still got shit load of yards ran the ball and all that but woodson nick collins tremont williams just those splashy guys you know in the back on the back end is gonna get a turnover and then you already know what 12 gonna do on the other side so that was the formula for that year we didn't even have to you know really have a defense like that Oh, no, you can't you can't sell my boy Clifford out like that, Fred. Hey, go look at. All right, bro. I don't know if you looked at it. Go look at Clifford. He had an interview or two. Like, just look him up. I'm sure his little top interviews will come out. Bro, got swag. He a cool, he a cool little kid. Oh, yeah. But again, that's going to help us more than it's going to hurt us, y'all. You got to remember something. Aaron Rodgers, late and over the middle. He had to do that first before he can say it. Like when you do it, it's like, oh, you know, that's what it is. And that's how it feels. I mentioned early in the season when Love was doing that shit, back foot and all this and that. I'm like, hey, it's cute, y'all, especially when he get a completion. But I'm like, a couple of them passes almost got picked off. You can't do that against the Niners, bro. You can't do that against them. You can't do that against them, bro. I'm sorry, bro. We almost had him. We could have had him, but it just wasn't meant to happen, bro. Jordan Love, you have to learn from that. And as you can see from his drive this whole offseason, y'all, y'all see this nigga on another level, bro. And he keep continuously getting interviewed. He got three interviews. I watched one yesterday with Giannis' brother. And, you know, again, he knew at it. Giannis' brother, you need to get your interviewing shit together. You know, and I ain't even just talking about the the disconnect with the the, the accent and all that. We could get over that, but you got to, you know. Situa but again, he from Greece, bro. But he he didn't know nothing about football. He didn't know what a wide receiver was. Uh, Yeah, that's a good one. But maybe, I mean, again, maybe we just got it like that. We just got the formula like, nigga, we're going to get a fourth rounder. Watch, we're going to get a lineman in the fourth round this year. He's going to be the starting guard, bro. It's going to be some shit like that happen. We don't even know yet. Yeah, yeah, Uh, you know. And again, he's one of those guys, hey, journeyman, cut from a couple teams. Sometimes it's just the situation where you at, how you being used, you know? So y'all lay off of Keyshawn, number one. It was his first year, you guys, first year at a position. You can't say nothing. He's learning on the fly, and he's learning from Joe Barry on the fly. Like, let's really be real, okay? What do you see, though, in Keyshawn, the athletic ability? You see that interception that he got on Pat Mahomes that, that sealed the game for us over there. You know, when we play at Kansas City, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I see. I see the return ability. What I see is every offensive play he played in, it was a positive play. And I don't mean two, three yards. I mean 10 to 15. Come on, Keyshawn, Keyshawn, any from L.A. No, nah, you ain't you ain't crazy, bro. You ain't crazy, especially because you're a Packer fan. And we all hope even Vegas, we all hope that AJ could get the 1K. But, you know, we, we got to be realistic, too. You know, and I get you. He 613 yards and he missed a few games. Yes. You know, is it impossible? No. But is it likely? No. That's all I'm saying. But would I be cheering and happy if he did it? You goddamn right. Um, Hey, man. What about your boy, Baby Gronk? Tucker Kraft, it was a point where we had to tell him to stop hurdling. No, that's cool, bro. No, that's still cool. And he going to come out, you know, with something to prove, you know, but I just thinking about the emergence of Emmanuel Wilson. That's all. First of all, Jacobs is here. We paying him a lot. So, you know, we're going to give him a few carries and then AJ is going to be in the mix, too, obviously. But then again, we were talking highly of Emmanuel Wilson and he would have been our second guy. if We didn't pull out that little contract from the archives or wherever the hell they got that contract from and gave it to Dylan. Listen, at this point, TR, no starter should be on special teams. That's just me as a coach. Because, motherfucker, 
Y'all other niggas on this team who ain't playing, who ain't getting no snaps, first of all, if you go out there and ball out, everybody knows special teams is a segue for players who, you know, don't get no time. I knew niggas on teams who just suck, didn't do nothing, but they came in with their hair on fire on special teams, number one, because that was their only chance. And number two, <laughs> you know, that was their only chance. So you got those guys. And then, again, everybody in the NFL is good, right? You know, we be playing, saying players suck and all that. We're just saying they suck compared to other players. Everybody's in the NFL is good and done been through enough football in their life to handle fucking special teams and not risk any of our starters. So that's what I feel about that. I ain't putting no goddamn starters on special teams. It's enough motherfuckers on the team, backups that we can put there that know special teams. It's just the motherfuckers don't want to do it. It's just that it ain't emphasized. You need to come in, hey, with the backups, hey, y'all ain't getting no time if y'all don't go hard on special teams. That's what you got to do. But, you know, I was mad we got Kylan Hill injured. I needed him for offense. I thought that he would be an early Aaron Jones replacement. You know what I'm saying? But he had a mouth on him. You know, they don't like that mouth in Green Bay. Well, shit. I mean, that's more instinct, though. So, you know, ain't too much teaching, you know, when, when it comes to returning shit. That's just instinct. That's another thing that fucking Keyshawn has is instinct. The interception he got from Mahomes, instinct. Returning the punts and, and kicks for touchdowns or even further, getting us to the 30 and 40. Y'all don't know how much that helps J-Love. You know, imagine we just backed up on an 8, on a 4, on a 12. Bro, we ain't moving that ball. You know how we be going 3 and now. So, y'all, you know, don't undervalue or underappreciate what Keyshawn Nixon brings to this team. Um, I wouldn't say I'm glad, but you know, he had to go. I ain't glad about it. He was a decent player. Decent though. Kind of Swiss army knife, but I would say he underachieved. Oh yeah. That's Brandy's favorite tight end. And bro, Hey, just to get him from Minnesota. I like, and broken block. And he caught a touchdown. That's tight end three y'all. Shoot. Hey. Brandy might do a little better than me in that dra in that race. But, uh, you know, I am getting better. You know, I'm getting a little better in shape. I told y'all I've been in the gym, you know. I've been keeping it up and shit, so. But not right now, as I'm smoking. Although, that don't mean as much as motherfuckers think so. Shit. Yeah, we definitely gonna be 425 most of the time. We ain't even gonna have that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my big plans on Easter Day? I'm gonna be on my gaming channel all day. Because I'm going to watch my Easter eggs hatch with my great new Packers players. So, you know, shout out again to the gaming channel. It, it's been going up lately. I don't know who the fuck watching. They should definitely play better. Uh, We're going to watch out for JJ because he is coming off of injury. But Brooks, oh, my God, that's another one. We got a lot of dudes who do y'all think these dudes just going to sit there and stay the same? No, what? Brooks is a, a hidden gem. Brooks might be a guy where we eventually have to pay him big bucks at some time, you know, depending on how we use them. That dude is a versatile. I love his motor, you know. Hey, y'all, just chill. That's just go Mike being go Mike. Hey, if I ain't blocked his ass yet, you know, I like, you know, I like his ass. So, you know, go Mike or just go on this shit. Hey, when go Mike get, goes to the gym, he's good. When we don't go to the gym, he come in here mad. Y'all done seen Goat Mike come in here saying some crazy shit, and I just had to say, bro, did you save your house today? You know what I'm saying? So Goat Mike is Goat Mike. But, you know, hey, we, we let people be themselves on here, bro. We ain't, we ain't cast, you know, we ain't castling nobody doing that. I ain't even blocked that uh, Vikings fan who came in because he came through with respect. I should have been like, Brandy, wipe his nose. I should have been like, Zane, wipe his nose. But, you know, just to do it for the first time to block a motherfucker. Not that I'm waiting to, but... You know, he put that F the Packers at the end. That's that was kind of. But then again, as a Vikings fan, I would be a hypocrite to get mad at a Vikings fan saying, fuck the Packers. We've done a lot to them for them to say that to us. So, you know, I can't I can't. You know, that's like a gang member not respecting his opposition. OK, you a crit, but the blood completes you like you ain't shit without him. And he tough, too. Y'all from the same street. You know what I'm saying? So don't act like that. I wouldn't mind, especially with his hands, which are underrated. I would not mind that. I would not mind that. And that might keep him around a little longer. I wouldn't mind that at all. Like a Najee Davenport. 
Davenport was a beast, y'all. That nigga was returning kicks. Woo! Zane. All right. Hey, you and hey, you and Zane. Hey, what you and go Mike smoking today, man? Nah, for real. Five of them things? You know, I, I say five, one hundred, but two? Zane, he coming out like that? The hammy's gonna be hey, the hammy's gonna be straight. Hello, I agree, Milto. I'm telling you, sometimes you just got to look at the athlete. Now, it's up to the coaches to put them in the right spot and coach them up so they understand what's going on. You know what I'm saying? He just don't understand what's going on because it's his first time in a position. My boy KH was at the game telling Nixon, hey, man, KH was in the crowd yelling, telling Nixon what to do. And then Rasul told him what to do, but he was too late, got burnt. But he was learning the position, bro. It was his first year doing it. Y'all can't discredit a first year motherfucker doing anything. Anything. Anything in life first year doing, bro. Now, afterwards, we can judge. Now, next year, this upcoming year, then we can see. But clearly, they talked to Halfley, and Halfley said, I need him. Bro, He's going. we're going to play to his strengths. Don't be surprised if Keyshawn Nixon is coming in on blitz. Um... Yeah, yo, I'm I'm stupid, you know, and I procrastinate and stuff. Eventually, I'm gonna fix up my channel to where I put my all my other channels, gaming, wrestling channels. Where I, I put it, I'm gonna put it all in the same spot so everybody can have access to it. I'm gonna do it, bro. I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna work on it. I know, I know, Brandy. I know. I'm gonna get on it. I'm 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 retarded though. Definitely, we ain't even talking about him. And don't. What about Britton Cox? Definitely. He can line up at edge or D tackle, and so can uh Brooks. Like people are and we got LBN and Rashad. It's gonna be a problem. And Uncle P, it's gonna be a problem, y'all. Hey, hey, you you enjoy seeing me suffer? But yeah, thanks TR for coming through, showing some love for real. Okay. Hey, man, we all for it. And, you know, I got a channel that teaches you how to do certain shit in it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Hey, man, that would be great, bro. And that would be a big turnaround for him. But, you know, we're going we gonna to be a big problem for people, like my boy Joe just said. But, shit, we had an hour, y'all. I'm about to get the fuck up out of here. Shit, I might jump on the game in a minute. I got to see what, what shit looking like. But uh, shout out to everybody who motherfucking came through today. Uh, You know, I had a really good time. That hour flew by. So, again, shout out to Zane Strong. Shout out to my boy Joe coming through again, man. TR, Milto. Hey, when you see Milto, hit that like button. If you didn't hit the like button on the way in, hit it on the way out. Shout out to Packer fan in Vegas coming through, showing some love, talking on my chat. Are you kidding me? Hey, that made my day today. Shout out to Packer fan in Vegas. Um, I might double down, triple down, quadruple down on y'all. Shout out to Steve, uh, uh, Brandy Lewis, Goat Mike, of course, my boy. Uh, shit, if I forgot about you, I didn't forget about you. Shout out to Packers Kingdom. My nigga Freddie Roper came through. TR. Packed house. Trying to make sure I got everybody. But, uh, hey, I appreciate y'all. Hey, and y'all have a good motherfucking weekend. Don't do nothing I wouldn't do. But shit, me, shit. I do everything, but just be careful out there. My nigga, hey, shout out to uh, Ernie Martinez, too. Steve Blake, 22. Goosby, Goosby, my boy. Here we go. Ernie Martinez. Hey, after, hey, shoo, boy, hey, after a minute, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm losing breath. Patrice Goldberg and Human Joey. Yeah, we're going to have to figure something out eventually with this little roll call shit. I might have to just do 10 each time, boy. But uh, I, I like to see the growth, bro. So I appreciate everybody for fucking with me and, you know, sticking with me. You know, I, a lot of y'all motherfuckers, I remember from my first few videos, man, in the comments. So I appreciate it. But uh, good weekend. I'll see y'all on Monday unless some crazy shit happened. But, you know, we, we in the dead time of the year. So I'm out.